With Google Tag Manager, you can track various user interactions. One of the most popular examples is form submissions. The user submits the form, and then you send that event to Google Analytics or some other platform of your choice. But what if a user submits the same form multiple times, or refreshes the thank you page multiple times? How can you ignore those duplicates? In this video, I will show you how to prevent duplicate form submissions with Google Tag Manager. Here I have a demo form, and if I submit it, then I am redirected to a thank you page where the page path contains slash thank you slash. So for this, I have a fairly basic setup in Google Tag Manager, where first I fire the Google tag, and it fires on initialization. And then when the user lands on a page where page path contains slash thank you slash, then I send a form submission event. Technically, I could also include some parameters like form ID because the URL contains it, but right now let's just keep things simple. So let's see how this tracking setup works in action. I will click preview button, and then I will enter the URL of the form, click connect, and then I will submit the form again. And here on a thank you page, if I go to the preview mode and click on DOM ready, I will see that my tag fired. However, if I refresh the page, it will reload, and on this DOM ready, the tag will still fire, which means that instead of one form submission, I will actually track two. Technically, there are multiple ways how this could be handled. For example, maybe a developer can add a data layer push on a thank you page, and that data layer push should happen only if that form was never submitted by the person before, because the developer knows the email address, and in the database, the developer knows which emails were submitted in the form. But in this case, we will take a look at another option, which is local storage, where you can store certain information. And in this case, we could technically store the form ID. And then when the same user tries to submit or refresh the page of the same form, then we could check if that form ID was already submitted by the visitor. So to implement this, we will use two custom codes. I will post them in the link below the video. We will have to create one custom HTML tag with this code and then one custom JavaScript variable with this code. Let's start with the tag. I will copy this, including the script tags. And then I go to Google Tag Manager, Tags, New, Tag Configuration, and then Custom HTML Tag. Here we should paste the code and it's important for us to replace this part because we have to tell this code how do we want to identify the forms. In my case, the thank you pages URL contains the form ID. So I could create a variable that will fetch this value and then the code will work with this ID. If you don't have the form ID in the URL or form ID in some other variable, maybe you could use the page path. That would work if each form's thank you page contains a different page path. For example, thank you dash and then some form ID or something else. But in my case, I have this. So technically I could create a variable in Google Tag Manager that will return the ID. So you know what, maybe first we should close this and first let's create a variable. I will discard the changes and I will go to variables, then user defined variables, new variable configuration, URL and query, because this is a query parameter. It comes after the question mark. Here I will enter form underscore ID because that's what I have right here. And then I will save this variable and hit the button. So now let's go back and create that custom HTML tag. In tags, I will click new, tag configuration, custom HTML, and then I will copy this code and we'll paste it right here. Then instead of replace this with quotes, I will start typing two curly braces and then select the URL variable. Now I want to emphasize that if in your case, the page path of each thank you page is different, then technically you could use another variable here, which is page path. Or maybe when the form is submitted, you get the data layer push and you have a data layer push variable that returns the form ID or form name or some other unique identifier, which is unique just to that particular form. So insert here a particular variable that will help you identify which form was submitted.
but in my case, it's URL form ID. Then we won't be using any triggering and we will just name this tag, let's say chtml store form ID in local storage like that and click save. Then save tag without a trigger and we want this tag to fire after we send an event to Google Analytics 4. Or maybe you are sending an event to another vendor like Meta, Pixel or something else. So we want this tag to fire after we send the form submission data to some vendor. If you're sending the form submission to multiple vendors, like multiple platforms, then ideally you should fire this custom HTML tag after the last tag, which sends the form submission. So for example, if this fires first and then Facebook pixel tag fires later, then this should fire after the Facebook tag. Technically, this could be handled with tag firing priority, but right now I have just one vendor, so I will click on this tag, which is the Google Analytics 4 event tag, and after this tag sends an event, I want to use tag sequencing. So I go to advanced settings, tag sequencing, and fire a tag after the form submission. And here I will select the custom HTML tag, then click save. So when the form is submitted, we will send an event to Google Analytics 4. And once this tag is processed, then we will store the form ID in the local storage. Let's check if this is working, but we are not done yet, of course. Right now, this is just like a temporary checkpoint for us to test. So let's click preview. This will refresh the preview mode. And then I will submit the form again. And on a thank you page, if I open developer tools, so that could be done by clicking three dots, then more tools, developer tools. And if I go to application, local storage, so I have to expand this and then select my domain. And here I will enter GTM. Then I will see GTM submitted forms. And this is the ID of the form because that's what I have in the URL. That custom HTML tag, it will take the identifier that you have provided and it will store it in a local storage with this particular key. So this is the key, which is right here. And then this is the list of IDs that were submitted. Right now, we just have a list of one form ID. But so far, this is working well. The next thing is that we will need to create a variable that will return true or false. If the form has been already submitted before, which means that it is a duplicate, then the variable will return true. And if it is a form that is submitted by this user for the first time, then it will return false because that's not a duplicate. So let's go to that code page that I mentioned before and then copy this variables code. Then let's go to Google Tag Manager, variables, and then create a new variable of which type is custom JavaScript and paste the code. Here, you also have to insert the variable that you used in the custom HTML tag. In my case, that is the URL variable. So I will delete this and then start typing double curly braces and select this. So once the form ID is stored in the local storage, this variable will check if that form ID or form path or whatever you are using, if it is already available in the local storage in this particular key. If yes, then this variable will return true. If not, then it will return false. Let's name this variable is form submission duplicate. And it's like a question and the answer is true if it is duplicate and false if it's not. Then click save. Let's test if this variable is working. So first I will go to the website without refreshing the preview mode and then I will delete this record or this key in the local storage. So I will just select it and then hit delete key on my keyboard. Now I will go to Google Tech Manager and refresh the preview mode by clicking this button. All right, so now I will submit the form I am on a thank you page. The key is created. This is our ID. And if I go to the tag assistant, which is the preview mode, and I select the latest DOM ready, but if you are sending form submissions on a different event, then of course you should select that different event here. And here I will go to variables. Right now it returns false because this is not a duplicate. Right now I have submitted this form in the context of local storage for the first time. But after the form was submitted, 
we then stored this ID. Now, if I refresh the page and check the latest DOM ready and the variable, right now it will return true. It will tell you that this is now a duplicate. The previous page load was not a duplicate, right now it is. So this variable should be used in your trigger that you are using to send the form submission to Google Analytics or some other vendor. Let's go to Google Tag Manager, Triggers, and this is my trigger that I'm currently using for that GA4 event tag. So if I click it, I need to make it more specific and tell it that it should fire not only on thank you page, but also if custom JavaScript variable is false. It's not a duplicate. Let's click save and let's test if this is working. So first I will again delete the GTM submitted forms key and then I will go to Google Tag Manager and click the preview button. Now let's submit the form. So I click this button. In the preview mode, if I go to DOM ready, I will see that my tag has fired, but also after this, my custom HTML tag fired. Ignore this unknown tag type because it's a bug in the preview mode, but the tag still fired just fine. And if I go to variables to check, right now it says false. So at this particular moment, Google Tag Manager thinks that this was not a duplicate form submission. Of course, at some point for the future events, it might start telling you that this is true, but it's important for us that on this particular event, when I'm firing my tag, it says false. But now if I go to the thank you page, I refresh it and then go back to the preview mode and click the latest DOM ready event, it tells us that this is a duplicate submission. And if I go to tags, my tag no longer fires because it is a duplicate. So we ignored that duplicate. Now let me show you one more example because I have another form which has a slightly different ID. First, I will close the preview mode and then I will start it again. But this time ID ends with eight. So let's click connect. And now if I submit the form, and then I open the developer tools, then go to application, local storage, my domain, and then type GTN underscore. Now you will see that both IDs are stored. So if I go to the preview mode and the latest DOM ready event, my tag fired because this is not a duplicate. This form was submitted for the first time by me. But if I refresh the page, then on the latest DOM ready, my tag did not fire, which is expected. And that's how you can prevent duplicate form submissions with Google Tag Manager. Basically, you have to create a custom HTML tag that stores data in the local storage. You will need to adapt a bit because maybe your form does not have a thank you page. Then you would need to find a way how to get some sort of identifier of the form. Maybe form name, maybe form ID, maybe page path or something else. And then we also created a custom JavaScript variable that checks your identifier and verifies if it is already stored in the local storage. If yes, then it will help you block the duplicate form submission from being tracked. So once you make sure that everything is working fine, then don't forget to submit your changes by clicking this button and then your changes will go live. However, there are some limitations. For example, local storage is limited to a subdomain. So if you have forms on multiple subdomains, your Google Tag Manager or any JavaScript on one subdomain will not be able to access the data of local storage of another subdomain. The reason why I chose local storage for this example is because the size of the memory in local storage is larger than in cookies. But on the other hand, cookies can be accessed from different subdomains. So if you're operating on different subdomains, then you might need to modify the code and use the cookies instead of local storage. And this is how you can prevent duplicate form submissions with Google Tag Manager. If you found this video useful, hit the like button below the video. That will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or GA4, then subscribe to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.